Hey everybody, here we are in micro chapter 8, the aptly homework. I'm going to look at questions 3 and 4. Question 3 talks about the relationship between tax revenues and elasticity of demand. Um, that's important if you're setting tax rates to remember one of your goals for tax rates is to uh, uh, limit deadweight loss, but the primary goal of tax rates taxes tends to be to increase, uh, to maximize tax revenues, or at least to raise tax revenues in some, some way or form here. So in this particular question, we have two markets, one for leather jackets and one for smartphones, and we're trying to decide which one is the most efficient, efficient market to impose the tax on. So here looking at the market for leather jackets, when we impose a tax of $100, we decrease the number of jackets sold. We don't actually increase the price by the entire $100. So the original price was 140 and 350 jackets sold. After the tax was imposed, we only sold 150 jackets, so the jackets, number of jackets sold dropped by quite a bit. The price only increased to 160. So the producers are paying a fairly hard, a large percentage of that tax rate. The consumers are paying the last uh, $20 of that tax rate. So let's look at how we calculate uh, tax revenue and how we calculate um, deadweight loss. So first, tax revenue. So the new price is $160. So we have, and, but we still are imposing a tax rate of $100. So the government is collecting $100 no matter who's paying the $100. So the government is, pay, is, is actually acquiring the first $100. That's everything from 60 to 160 times the number of jackets sold, which is 150. So 100 times 150, that's this area right here, is our tax revenue for, uh, for the government in that case. 150 times 100. It's 150 times 100 for total revenues. Uh, let's see, whatever that works out to be. It's actually, one of these is in thousands too, so I'm going to get the number wrong any way you look at it. But uh, 100. Okay, so in this case, leather jackets, the government gets $100 in tax revenue. We sell 100 uh, jackets, so government revenue is 15000 <clears throat> Deadweight loss is a little bit more complex. We have to use the formula for, for the area of a triangle again. That's 1 half base times height. I actually tend to look at these crooked when I do this, so I can so, so, so that's 100. There's your base times your times your height, which is 350 minus 150 or 200, so 100 times 250 and half of that for my dead weight loss. So if I write that down, so that's 100 times. So 100, that's your tax rate, times 200, that's how much we dropped, uh, 350 minus 150, so that's how many went away, times 0.5, because this is a triangle, not a square, so that is what, 20,000 times 0.5, so that's 10,000. So we've got debt. So we've so we have uh, government revenues of fifteen thousand, deadweight loss of ten thousand on our leather jacket market. Now, smartphone buyers <clears throat> are not as sensitive to that change in price, and you can tell that right away because the demand curve is much, much, much steeper than it is for leather jackets. And you can also tell that because when you look at the tax that was imposed, we imposed the same tax, a hundred dollars. 
The original equilibrium price was 140, the second equilibrium price was 220, so our consumers are paying the vast majority of, of the tax there. We find revenues, or tax revenues the same way, so the tax, $100, times the number sold, which is 300. So 100 times 300, that's $30,000 for this, for this square right here, the green square, which would be our, our uh, tax revenues. Now the um, dead weight loss is going to be quite a bit smaller. This time it's 100, but our um, decrease in quantity was only 350 to 150, or 350 to 300, so it was only 50. So 100 times 50 times 0.5 for our smartphone market there. So our smartphone dead weight loss was only 2,500. Tax revenues were 30,000. So which would you put the tax on? So you would place the tax probably in the smartphone market because the tax you raise more taxes at a lower dead weight loss. And the reason that happens is because the demand for smartphones is much less elastic than the demand for leather jackets. So question four looks at what happens to tax revenues when you continuously increase tax rates. So in this particular market, this is the market for DVDs, we look at what happens when we continuously raise, what happens to tax revenues when we continuously raise the tax rate. So initially in this market, when there were no taxes at all, we were at this equilibrium right here. So the price of DVDs was $20 and we sold 100 of them. We then imposed an $8 tax. When we imposed an $8 tax, the supply curve shifted up by $8. The price went up to $24. The number of DVDs went back to $8. So, so we did raise some tax revenues there, though, right? So our tax revenues are going to be $8 times uh, 80. So $640,000 is what we raised in taxes this first time. Then this question has you go through and do that exact same calculation for a tax rate of 16, 20, 24, 32, and 40 dollars. So I did some of these. So here was here was eight. And then I did 16, 20, 24. I skipped 32 and went straight to 40. So you can see what happens. So the takeaway here is very important. So the takeaway is that tax revenues are eventually going to decline as tax rates rise. And that's because people buy less and less and less of this particular good as tax rates rise and as prices get higher demand actually tends to become more and more elastic so even or less and less inelastic if you want to say it that way and eventually in this case when you get the up to the tax rate of uh, forty dollars demand goes to zero which means at forty dollars we don't have any tax revenues whatsoever so this is a very important policy piece to keep in mind is that tax rates as tax rates increase the revenues generated by that tax rate will eventually decline. They start out increasing, they plateau, but they eventually decline. So that's the important takeaway for that one. And I think that's all I have to say about this question. So let me know if you guys are enjoying these uh, videos and which questions you'd like to see me do in the future. Thanks!